Now, finally, let's talk about the income and substitution effects. So here's one to use them. Whenever a price changes in the world and you're wondering, you know, am I going to buy more or less of different goods now? Well, that's when you want to use the income and substitution effect to figure that out. Here's the thing. The income and substitution effect, think of, think of them as like the devil and the angel, right? Both of them are giving you, you know, advice, sometimes conflicting, sometimes the same. But either way, your end result, what you end up doing, what you physically end up doing, your reaction to a price change is sort of the sum of both of those, the income effect and the substitution effect. So let's, uh, let's take a look at an example problem. Let's say apples and oranges are both normal goods. So apple, normal and oranges are normal. And let's say that the price of apples increases. We want to see now what happens to the quantity of apples versus the quantity of oranges. Now, all right, here's, and so really what we're going to do is we're going to first find the substitution effect and income effect and see what each one is saying. So now, now let's generalize. What is the substitution effect? Well, that's probably the thing that you're more familiar with, that if any price in the world goes up, you want less of that good. It does go one step further though. It says that if any price goes up, not only do you want less of that good that's more expensive, but you want more of other goods. You're sort of substituting with that same amount of you know, money you're substituting, so you're actually buying more of other goods. So, in this case, if apples are more expensive now, the substitution effect is very much like the law of demand. If price of apples increase, you want less apples. Not only that, but even though oranges price haven't changed at all, you do want more oranges, right? Part of you are saying, hey, you know, get less apples, but get more oranges now instead. So that's, that's what part of you is thinking. Notice this doesn't mean that that's what you're physically going to do because we also have to take the income effect into account. One thing to notice though about the substitution effect, it doesn't depend at all on whether these goods are normal or inferior, right? We, we don't use that at all. So again, just to recap, substitution effect is basically saying if any price goes up, normal or inferior, buy less of that good and more of the others. And the other way around, if a price goes down, buy more of the good whose price went down and less of the other good whose price didn't change. Now the income effect. What this one is saying is that when any price goes up, doesn't matter which good, any price goes up, it's as if you're poorer, right? Because you can afford less stuff. The price went up, you're poor. So if any price goes up, you're poorer. So you want to buy less of every normal good and more of every inferior good. So here and, and the other way around, if a price goes down, it's as if you're richer. So you're going to buy more of every normal good and less of every inferior good, not taking into account at all which goods price change. So you might even have a case where, oh, a price of a good went up, but you still wanted more of it because, you know, it was inferior or something like that. But either way, let's just systematically look at it in this problem. If the price of apples increase, well, the best way to think about income effect is, is you want to immediately translate that into are you richer or poorer. So if a price increases, doesn't matter which good, you're poorer. So if you're poorer, you want to buy less normal goods, more inferior goods. So is apple normal or inferior? It's normal and you're poor, so you want less of that good. Uh, oranges are also normal, so you also want less of that. Notice that in this case, if, if, whichever, if either of one were inferior, the only thing that would change is the arrow for income effect would then now be greater. If it's inferior, you're poor, you want more of it. So again, this could be if both of them were inferior, they'd both be upward arrows. If, which, if one of them was, then only that one would be upwards. Either way, the end result, what you end up doing, well, let's see. For oranges, this guy is saying, buy more oranges. This guy is saying, buy less oranges. So you're kind of conflicted. So the amount of oranges you end up buying is actually ambiguous. Part of you is thinking, hey, apples are more expensive, so let me buy more oranges. And another part of you is like, I'm poor, I should buy less oranges. But for apples, let's see, the devil and the, uh, the angel are both agreeing with each other. They're both saying, hey, you're poor, buy less apples. And this guy is saying, apples are more expensive, buy less apples. So you're like, fine, fine, I'll buy fewer apples. So that's how you can use the income and substitution effect to figure out 
whether a price change causes you to buy more or less of a certain good and whether it's ambiguous.